lost a deal a few years ago. It was a big deal. It was worth about $10,000 to us. I don't know if $10,000 sounds like real money to you, but it's real money to me. One transaction, $10,000, it would have made a big difference in our lives at that time. And I blew it without even knowing that I had blown it by being too good at understanding people, for real. And I wasn't anywhere near as good at, at, as, at it as I am now. But um, we had everything sewn up, buttoned up, everything was working fine. And um, it was a married couple, we were selling a house. And we took the couple out to dinner. We really hit it off. It was good, it was really good. And I, um, got on particularly well with the husband of the marriage, and uh, I understood him, I understood his motivations, I understood what drove him, he was a very driven man, and uh, I sat through dinner basically just feeding his enthusiasms, I knew what they were, and I knew how to feed them, and um, I knew how to get him excited, and I really understood the guy, I mean, I understood him like I understand myself. And he was really enthusiastic. He was really excited. This is a, a salesman's dream to have the prospect that excited. And over dessert, the wife looks over to me and she said, you read people, don't you? And I had no idea how to react to that. I didn't know what she was saying. But two days later, they killed the deal killed it entirely and they sent me a thousand dollars as compensation typically when deals fall apart you do not get paid but they sent me a thousand dollars as compensation and it was maybe six months later that I understood what that question you read people don't you meant she was afraid of me she thought I was doing some kind of voodoo I don't know that it was necessarily a, a true fear of the supernatural, but um, one way or another, whether uh, I was in consort with the devil or I was just an exceptionally talented con man, she got afraid of me. I made her afraid of me by responding so positively to her husband and her husband responding so positively to me. It was funny. It's funny to me now. It wasn't funny then. <laughs> The thousand dollars was nice. The missing nine thousand dollars was not nice. And I really wanted um, that particular deal to go through because it would have been good for uh, making other transactions happen also. So uh, losing the ten thousand dollar commission probably accounted for losing a hundred thousand in commission over the course of the next two or three years just by losing that one deal. It was a great big deal. It was a great big thing for me. But that question, you read people, don't you? haunts me to this very day, particularly when I'm at a point now where I read people so much better than I could do then. But I'm involved right now in a uh, personnel dispute, not in my own business. I think my personnel problems in my own business are uh, at least temporarily in abeyance. I'm convinced I can screw things up in the future, but I'm not screwing things up right now. But I'm involved in a personnel dispute in um, another business. And I understand exactly what's wrong. I know exactly what's wrong. I know how to fix this problem. And I've expressed to the decision maker how to go about fixing the problem. And I promise you that my ideas will go nowhere. Will go absolutely nowhere. The dispute is um, manager, CD, cautious, driven but cautious first with um, the subordinate who is SC, sociable and cautious. And the actual source of the conflict is the cautious temperament on both sides of the table that the CD manager wants it his way and um, will not concede that there could possibly be any other way. This is in the nature of the cautious temperament. Cautious and driven together is it is a very productive way of getting the cautious style of work done. 
the CD will get the job done, but will um, have very little sensitivity for inbound displays, will not regard inbound displays as being terribly meaningful or momentous in any case, whatever. I mean, you really got to hit them over the head with the baseball bat to get him to acknowledge that there's something that's not accounted for in a spreadsheet. And um, the SC temperament is um, kind of similarly pig-headed. Obviously, um, sociable people are very sensitive to inbound displays, but inbound social displays, not necessarily um, work-related displays. And the cautious temperament in the subdominant characteristic makes an SC um, hugely inflexible, that the C in that subdominant position can be thought of as cautious, but you can also see it as being conscientious, um, and really um, the word, the C word that best describes the cautious temperament in the subdominant characteristic is conservative. An SC will be very conservative about the nature of the social relationships. The social relationships will matter more, but the social relationships will follow a particular pattern, and any deviation from that pattern will will result in conflict. And um, SC is the um, the good German profile that when we think about the question arose after World War II: How could these wonderful German people? How could they have? followed a monster like Hitler over the cliff it's because they were SC in large measure not all of them but um, this is the essence of the Lutheran state of mind that uh, Church of Martin Luther is an SC church very sociable but uh, very ordered very uh, formalized and um, not at all tolerant of deviation from the ideal order of everything. And so, SCs are really, really eager to belong to the group, but they're also really avid about the group hewing to its standards and principles, hewing to its form, hewing to its ideal order of everything, and um, can be very obstinately digging your heels resistant to any sort of change in that ideal order of, of everything. And that's the nature of this personnel problem that I'm involved in. That we have the CD manager who wants everything to be just so his way, and the SC subordinate who wants everything to be just so her way. And neither of them can see that it is their own um, idealization of the perfect order of everything, two different perfect orders of everything, but their idealization of those perfect orders that prohibit them, prevent them from reaching an accord, a mutually satisfactory accord, even though the problem that they're having is, in my opinion, completely trivial. And here's Greg clued into all of this. I can see exactly what's wrong. I can see it in, um, you know, step way back and just see it at the level of CD versus SC. And it's easy for me to understand it that way. But looking at the particular issues involved, I can see how they play out. And in, in, in that exact way, according to that paradigm, that the particular issues in conflict are all in that form, CD versus SC, CD versus SC, again and again and again. You can, you can see exactly how the conflicts arise, and as you are focused on arriving at the resolution, which is the very driven way of approaching this sort of thing, you can see how easy it is to fix all of this, or at least I can see how easy it is to fix all of this. And yet I can see that uh, none of it will be fixed. This will result in determination of the subordinate. This problem will not be resolved, even if there is some sort of temporary patch up now, which I don't foresee, but which could happen. These, these two people will fly apart because they're unwilling to concede that there's any other way of looking at the universe than the, the, the position that they've dug into. Each one of them has dug into his own or her own fortified position and neither one of them wants to admit that there could possibly be any other way of looking at the universe. This is very comical to me.
particularly because I know how to fix it. And I'm way overworked right now. I'm a day late for church. I'm uh, very busy and I'm kind of adulpated and um, frustrated because I can fix these kind of problems so easily, or at least I can see how to fix them so easily, and yet I'm not um, empowered to do what's necessary not to fix this particular problem, but not to fix any of these problems that I can see all over the place all the time. And so I guess um, what I want to do today is lean on you to volunteer yourself for my therapeutic interventions. I um, would love to be involved. I'm involved in a half a dozen marriages in um, to one degree of involvement or another, none terribly, terribly seriously, but uh, I think beneficially, because then we have people who really have to, really do have to work it out, who can't fire each other, who can't quit, can't fire, can't get away from each other, they do have to work it out, and that's a good thing, that's a real good thing. Because if you do have to work it out, then you will work it out, and I can help in that regard. Um, but in um, corporate environments or other social organizations, I can help also, and I really would like to, I'd like to do more of that. So. Uh, I guess I'm entreating you to uh, bring me your problems, bring me your intractable social social situations, and um, invite me in to talk about why your social machines are broken and um, how to go about fixing them. So I volunteer myself for uh, this. I'm not volunteering to do it for free because I can't afford to work for free. To, the idea of a $10,000 commission sounds real good to me today, but I'm not talking about that kind of money. But um, if you are in a work group or a corporate situation, um, a club, a church, or a marriage that you think should be working and isn't, I can probably diagnose your problem and tell you how to fix it in one day or less. Whether you actually do follow through and fix it is another thing entirely, and uh, my frustration in this particular situation is the recognition that even though I know exactly how to fix this, none of my advice will be, uh, will be followed. But if you really do want to fix your social machine, I can show you how to do it. And this would be good for you, because fixing your social machine will make your life happier, and it will be good for me because I want to study this stuff more and more. The more things I see, the more I learn, the more I learn, the more I know, the more I know, the more I know to look for, and the more I look for things, the more I see. So if you're one of the three or four dozen people who sees this movie in the coming weeks, and you want to find out why your social machine is not working, my name is Greg Swan. This is the Church of Splendor, and I know how to fix everything. Bless you. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon.